We have an active week full of planetary transits. In this week's astrology, Libra season begins, giving us the urge to work on our close personal relationships. There will be two important retrograde alignments for Pluto and Neptune into turning points for their regressive cycles. And over these next seven days, the Sun and Mars will make the most connections, aiding us with the stamina to be more ambitious and allowing us to learn the art of balance concerning our confidence. And with an active week like this, the vibes on the graph are plentiful. At the beginning of the week, psychic vibes will be the highest energy on the graph. Overall, over the next seven days, psychic vibes will be the highest energy. So from the 18th to the 20th, it'll be intersecting social, family and friends, plus mental abilities. Some of this can serve as aha moments to things that we were instinctively feeling. In other words, if there was something that you felt intuitively, this may be a moment where you're realizing that your hunch is right about something. Also, it could be a period of working out certain things in our mind that we thought was one thing and ends up being another. With some of those social energies, it could also be a time of clearing up misunderstandings so that way things don't get swept under the rug. Through the rest of the week, mental energy will continue and it'll intersect ambitious vibes. For this reason, we might feel sharper than normal and also find ways to come up with better backup plans for ourselves, coming up with strategies to get us back on track on our objectives, especially if we felt somewhat stalled out from that Mercury retrograde and all the other energies that were going on at the beginning of the month. So yeah, we have yet another colorful week. Let's look at these next bunch of days and see what we can expect. As a reminder, don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps this channel grow. And if you'd like to support the work of this channel, you could do so by buying me a fresh cup of coffee. There's a link in the description box below. The 19th is an interesting day with two transits that may bring about some trickery and also some foggy moments about what we should do. The sun is gonna be making an opposition with Neptune. This is where we were seeing that psychic energy popping up on the graph and the psychic energy in itself will be potent. This could be a day where our intuition is on fire. This could be a day where we're feeling more sensitive to energies also with something like this. One of the main reasons for this is a sun opposition with Neptune happens to be a retrograde alignment and it happens to be a retrograde alignment that's a turning point. It's a turning point because it's almost like a full moon when you have an opposition with the sun and the outer planets, including Mars. It is the midpoint of the retrograde cycle. So this could feel very potent in itself. And if you have been experiencing the Neptune retrograde, in other words, if you've been being aspected by the retrograde through your planets and chart points, this could feel like a period where you're in a peaked out cycle of the retrograde. Some of the ways this can show up is through needing validation to affirm ourselves. Sometimes this could also come up as masking some of our unfavorable qualities to gain approval. So in other words, this may be a reality check about being comfortable with who you are and not needing the validation from others and gaining confidence from within yourself, but also not hiding who you are in order to get the favor of other people. Because this is the midpoint of the Neptune retrograde, this can also show up as having an epiphany about someone else's personality or finally seeing the truth about someone else's intentions, finally seeing the truth of an idealized image you might have had of a person. Sometimes it's not all bad. Sometimes we can, you know, put someone on a pedestal and idealize them and believe that they might be something and they turn out to not be that thing. And of course, obviously that can have a negative effect. And then sometimes we might have unrealistic unrealistic expectations of what someone should be. And with energy like this, practice spiritual hygiene today. Try to ground your energy the best way you can. Try to come to a point where you feel comfortable looking at the truth, which I know not always easy. It's easier said than done, but this is one of those retrograde periods where we do have to deal with these things so that way we can move forward in our lives and not have those things creating self-sabotage in our life. And at least we're halfway there with the Neptune retrograde. This planet will go direct soon? Well, soon-ish. This planet won't go direct until December 6th, and then it'll leave its post-shadow on March 25th, 2024. So, I mean, we've got a little bit of a ways, but at least we're halfway done. On that same day, Mars is going to make a quincunx with Jupiter, and we will need to exercise extra caution and restraint, especially with the Sun making that opposition to Neptune. That can also rev up impulsivity, and with the Jupiter-Mars stuff, that can really inflate the situation in terms of being impetuous. But but I will say Mars quincunx Jupiter is a fun alignment. It has its fun parts to it. Some of the reasons why we were seeing that social energy and the family and friends popping up was this energy in itself.
health. On the fun end, it's encouraging for getting out there. It's encouraging for putting us in a good mood. And I will welcome this one because of the good mood it leads to because that Neptune one can somewhat be draining and something of a damper. So if you're having a moment where you're feeling down, this may be the thing to lift your spirits up. And because this promotes a very social vibe, it could be a day of just getting together with people. If you're not getting together with people face to face, it could be a day of constant communication back and forth over social media or tax. However, because this is a quincunx, it shows where we lack insight. It shows where we lack a lot of self-awareness. And when you have Mars and Jupiter coming together, it can show where we might be careless. It could show where we're irresponsible. It could show where we're unhealthily competitive with other people. It can show overconfidence. Truly, Mars and Jupiter and some other combinations can show us where we have wafting levels of unjustified confidence. So this can be problematic in an energy like this. Also, it can show where we're really entitled and we expect everyone to give us what we want now, now, now. Otherwise, we might throw a tantrum. And of course, because this is Mars and Jupiter, it can inflate temperamental issues. So there could be a lot of anger and hostility that we're not aware of that we may be displaying to other people. One of the other ways that this can show up is through avoidance. So if there was something that we needed to take care of and we've been putting it on the back burner because we didn't want to be bothered with the responsibility of it, we might get the nudge needed to take care of those things before it bites us in the ass. So yeah, what a Tuesday. At least on the 21st, the sun will be making a trine with Pluto. And right before it goes into Libra, it's going to make this perfect harmonious alignment with Pluto in itself, which could feel ultra transformative. And this also happens to be the second retrograde alignment that's about turning points. The sun making a trine with Pluto marks the end of the retrograde cycle. It also marks the beginning of the retrograde cycle on either side. So we see that opening trine as Pluto is about 20 days into its retrograde cycle, but also as it's winding down and coming to a close, we can see that other trine pop up on the other side of this retrograde. So this could be a moment where we have some clarity on what we needed to shift in our lives. Under this influence, we get the urge to reflect on past events that affected our ability to let go of baggage. So this next stage could be a phase of realizing what was holding you back, what type of unconstructive behaviors and patterns were preventing you from transforming and moving forward in the way that you should in your life. What was preventing you from empowering yourself? Some of this could look like moving away from things that hinder us in terms of our confidence or going through a complete shift in our ego in a healthy way. Also, this could be a stage where you're coming to the realization that you need to move away from a situation or a specific person. Of course, even though this is a harmonious alignment, all that stuff sounds hard. At the same time, what makes it harmonious is you're able to do that with ease and move through those things and have came to a point more than eager to shed your old skin. By the time we get to the 22nd, Mars is going to make a sesquic quadrate with Saturn, showing us the importance of why we shouldn't rush into things. So this is one of those transits. If we're impatient about something and we're expressing it in a pushy manner, it can have adverse effects to what we're trying to accomplish. In other words, if we're needing to move through something really fast and we're wanting to get through a task as quickly as possible, if we push too hard, we could end up against a brick wall. And as a matter of fact, it could end up backfiring on us, especially if we're dealing with other people in a pushy manner. So being overly demanding could cause delays in an energy like this. Also on the flip side, it could be a day where we might have reached our limit in terms of dealing with pushy people. So we might be the ones laying down the law today in terms of someone trying to push us past our parameters. But overall, an energy like this is all about learning the importance of delayed gratification. Mars and Saturn, when they're in hard aspect, has a lot to do with that sort of power struggle energy. Where doing things the fast way gets you nowhere. And also because we've got that Mars energy and also combined with Saturn, it could tend to turn into a situation where people get angry at us. So do the best you can when this energy hits. On the 23rd, the sun enters Libra. Happy birthday, Libras! And happy equinox to everyone. In the northern hemisphere, this is where we have our fall equinox. For those in the southern hemisphere, this is your spring equinox. Because I live in the northern hemisphere, I do come from a place of reflecting on that a little bit more. But I do want to acknowledge it's not fall for everyone anytime we hit this equinox point in September. But but here we are back at another cardinal point. The cardinal signs mark the beginning of seasons, which is why they're associated with initiating and starting something. Aries marks the spring equinox. Cancer opens up the summer. Libra opens up the fall. 
and Capricorn opens up the winter time for us. Cancer and Capricorn are the solstice points, while Aries and Libra open up the equinox points. So this is the time of year, no matter what hemisphere you're on, where we receive equal day and equal night due to this access point. One other thing to note, the sun happens to be in its fall position when it is in Libra. Essential Dignities is a system in astrology that shows us which pairings are a great match and which pairings may run into certain snags. It's not like the sun isn't wonderful in Libra because it absolutely is. It just so happens that the transiting sun through Libra runs into a few errors and a lot of it has to do with Aries. Aries is the exaltation point for the sun and is the polar opposite of Libra. The sun is the governing celestial body for Leo which happens to be about the self and Aries happens to be about the self. Aries has to be about self-identity and Leo is about shining for your uniqueness as an individual. The sun is where we gain our confidence through self-motivation and stepping into our individuality whereas Libra happens to be about gaining confidence through our one-on-one -on -one relationships. An energy like this is about considering the other and so when you have the sun in Libra it can run into snags for those reasons since there are two motivations going on at once. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a ton of great qualities in terms of this. One of the awesome things about the sun's transit through Libra is we take a moment to consider other people. We take a minute to cultivate our close relationships. We take a moment to be less selfish and get our ego out the way when it comes down to our close unions. So this could be a time where our needs get met through some of those unions. It doesn't always have to be romantic relationships, although with Libra, that's always the association and it does deal with that. But it could be our close friendships. It could be our close family members. It could be business partners. It could be about networking. It could be collaborative energy with other people since Libra is excellent for collabing. So this could be a period of teaming up with people. And again, it doesn't have to be in the business sense. It also doesn't have to be in the platonic sense. It doesn't have to be in the romantic sense. But whichever relationship that you're focused on, this could be a period of really building those things. It's a time where we're more considerate of other people's feelings. So this could be a phase of putting our ego aside in favor of peace and harmony. So we might be more willing to compromise. In Libra energy, peace matters more than being victorious over others. So this may be a time where you're willing to let things roll off your back. Even if you happen to be right in the moment, it may feel like a time where it's just not worth getting into a battle with someone because it's trivial anyway and it's not going to solve anything. Under this influence we may have more of an urge to do things that are more cultural. We could have the urge to do things that are more dealing with aesthetics and by aesthetics it could have a lot to do with gallery hopping, art, beauty, switching up our wardrobe and adorning ourselves with the latest fashion, and hanging out in scenes with a pretty ambience. Even though Taurus is the one that gets associated with food, Libra is a Venus ruled sign and so this also deals with indulgence so it could be time to dine on fine cuisine. Libra has a very sophisticated tone to it, so it could be all about going to decadent restaurants, more so sophisticated restaurants. Speaking of restaurants, this could also be a time where we're more interested in going on dates. Not that we're not interested in going on dates normally, but Libra season really tends to rev up the romantic side in us. Especially once we get a Venus in Libra, that really adds to that tone. But this could be a time where we're more focused on our love life. This could be a time where we're more demonstrative. There could be an urge to couple up if you're single or meeting more committal types. This is usually the time of year in the northern hemisphere where we have cuffing season and people finally put a label on it after all the summer antics. And overall, for those in relationships, it could be a really romantic time intimacy-wise. Of course, there's always a lower expression as there is anytime there's a sign change. And for as easy as Libra energy is, it's no different. Coming back to relationships, this is the type of energy where we have to be aware of being codependent. Sometimes under this alignment, we can lose ourselves in relationships. And this is where those conflicts come in with the Sun and Libra pairing together. With the Sun being about independence and Libra being about one-on-one -on -one relationships, there can sometimes be a conflict with that. So there could be some of a back and forth between being your independent self, but also melding in a relationship. Speaking of going back and forth, there could be more moments of indecisiveness under this energy and not being able to choose things. Also not being able to choose a side and going back and forth. Sometimes this can transfer into passive aggressive behavior. And a lot of that is due to built up resentment for not speaking up. One of the things with Libra energy that's great is it's 
all about keeping the peace, but sometimes this energy can keep the peace for the sake of not disrupting the flow. And so there could be moments where we're dealing with some petty behavior, some covert behavior, just because there's some past resentment building up underneath the surface. And the way it's expressing is through petty behavior. And again, that passive aggressiveness that I was mentioning. But yeah, this Libra season will be interesting. This will be the first Libra season in a while that's having an eclipse. So this should definitely get colorful over this season, along with all the other transits the Sun and Libra will be making. And speaking of, right out the gate, the Sun's going to make a sesquic quadrate with Jupiter, which could lead to grandiosity on that day. We may need to balance out wafting levels of confidence when an energy like this hits, so it could be a day where we are feeling good about ourselves, and that's always great. Also, there's another alignment to do with confidence on that day, which might mitigate that to some degree, but this is one of those energies where we have to be aware of being overly snooty, overly arrogant. It could be a day of dealing with people who are blowing out a lot of hot air and are just braggadocious. And also there could be moments where we're dealing with those who stretch the truth in order to validate their inflated sense of self. So it's an uncomfortable energy and awkward for that reason. It can be fun. It does bring in a dose of fun. When you see Jupiter in most alignments, depending on the planet, it's generally a fun energy. So we might feel adventurous on that day and it's happening on a Saturday. So it could absolutely give us the urge to go out on an adventure. But other than that, try to curb some of the lower vibrations of this energy the best way you can. That same day, we have two post-shadow retrograde alignments that might create moments where we're not speaking the way we should, but also moments where we see where we need to heal certain parts of ourselves concerning our love life. Mercury is going to make a sesquic quadrate with Pluto. So communication-wise and with that Jupiter Sun situation, this might amplify situations with people with demanding personalities. This is the third hit from this energy. The first time we had this was on August 8th. Then we had it on September 6th when Mercury was fully in its retrograde. And now this is wrapping that up with this alignment. So it could be a day of coming back to conversations that were uncomfortable and sometimes in real heavy situations, having the final word in an argument. It could also be a day of talking about inappropriate subject matter. Sometimes that comes up with an energy like this. And some of that can be incomprehensible. Some of it could be a situation of dealing with others who are talking about someone else's business because this can be a very gossipy sort of energy as well. So do the best you can when this energy hits. Luckily, we have this Venus trying Chiron situation, which is also a post shadow alignment going on. The first time we saw this alignment was on June 29th when Venus was in its pre shadow, then on August 13th while Venus was fully into its retrograde. And now that we're getting this final hit, it could be all about wrapping things up, looking at the areas of our love life that we need to heal, looking at where we need to have more confidence, looking at where we need to let go of past pain in relationships or memories of rejection or remarks that people made that questioned our value. So it could be a time of shaking some of that stuff off and realizing that you're good enough, realizing you deserve more, realizing why you need to raise your standards. A transit like this promotes us healing and repairing the relationship with ourselves. That way we have self-respect and can go on having healthier relationships. By the time we get to the next day, we have another Chiron alignment. Mars is making an opposition with Chiron and we haven't seen this one since October 1st of 2021. Cycles between Mars and some of the other planets aren't as frequent as we would have with Mercury, the Moon, or Venus, or the Sun. So sometimes it takes about two years, and this one is just shy of a couple of weeks to hitting its two-year mark. But an alignment like this can show us where we're lacking drive and motivation. Sometimes this is through psyching ourselves out due to a fear of failure. In other scenarios, it could be that our energy levels are low. And so we're not able to start things right away. We're not able to initiate things right away. So this could be a nudge needed to work on those things so that way we can have what we want and go after things ambitiously. On the flip side though, we might have to address things with being toxically ambitious. In other words, sometimes we participate in grind culture and there is nothing wrong with that but there has to be a balance there has to be a balance with all these things there has to be a balance with rest but there also has to be a balance with being in constant go mode so this can show where we've been toxically productive this could also show where we've been overly competitive and only seeking victory also this can show where constantly being in go mode has led to being burnt out and we no longer have the stamina to do what we need to do it wouldn't be a mars chiron alignment if it didn't show us where we needed to work on our 
temper. So this could be one of those things where on one end, we have to work on being overly angry. We have to work on our combative nature. Conversely, it can show where we need to learn how to stand up for ourselves. So this could be a moment of realizing we need to heal things in terms of our anger, but also realizing that we need to start asserting ourselves healthily when other people are trying to throw their weight around on us. But overall, a configuration like this shows us where we need to get in touch with our personal power. So this may be a time where we're realizing that we need to become more self-assured and empower ourselves in a constructive way. And if this isn't us, it may be a time where we need to lend our strength to others. It could be a time where we're advocating for people who can't advocate for themselves. So it may be a time to offer up support to other people. Well, this third week of September is anything but boring. We will absolutely be charged up and ready to go. But even with the harsher tones, we can still get the ball rolling on things that need our attention. So use this week to work on confidence and motivation so you can get back on track with your aspirations. Anyway, I hope you all have the best week ever. Later and see you in the next episode.